I left South Korea in August of 2020 after four years of living and working there as a native English teacher. I originally applied through EPIC and got placed in the Cholanando language program. Now it's been a few months since I've been back and I've had plenty of time to reflect on my time living and teaching in South Korea. If you've come across my channel before, then you know that I have made videos about living in Korea in the past, but today I wanted to do the ultimate guide to teaching in Korea. The topics that I'm going to talk about in this video are based off my own experiences and stories from other teachers I've met over the past four years, based off a public school environment. So if you are looking to work for a private academy or a hagwon, then not all of this information is necessarily going to apply to you. There's a huge amount of things that I wanted to cover in this ultimate guide and so for easy of viewing what I'm going to do is split them into six shorter videos. All six of these videos are going to be linked down below in a playlist and you can also find them on my channel. Everything is going to be time stamped so that you can skip to a specific topic that interests you. The six videos will be number one, where will I live, city versus rural, Number two, landing in Korea, orientation and contracts. Number three, off to school, apartments and co-teachers. Number four, teaching schedules, class types and the weekends. Number five, your first class, teaching tips and attitude to teaching. And number six, the pros, the cons and the reality of teaching in South Korea. If you haven't already checked out the previous videos and topics to this ultimate guide, then go and do that first. But otherwise, let's crack on with the next topic. If you go to Korea through a company such as Epic, then as a part of your contract, you will be given a rented apartment. This apartment is either going to be rented out by your school or the education office. Nine times out of 10, the apartment that you will be living in is going to be the exact same apartment that your predecessor lived in. The furniture in the apartment is either going to be owned by your school or the landlord or a mixture of both. I'm going to be real here. Do not expect a brand new, modernly furnished apartment. It is likely that the furniture in your apartment has been used by the previous 10 teachers. The cutlery in the kitchen will be left behind by previous teachers and so that sort of thing is up to you whether you wish to replace it. If furniture is broken or you don't have something that you need such as a wardrobe or a microwave then that is your school's responsibility to make sure that you have those things and if you don't then you need to inform them that your apartment is missing basic equipment. If something doesn't work in your apartment for some reason such as the toilet then that is your school's responsibility and the landlord's job to sort that out for you. Your apartment is likely to be quite small so think one room studio apartment although there are cases and they tend to be more in rural areas where large apartments are possible. We go in with the expectation of receiving a small one room apartment so that you can't be disappointed when you arrive but anything bigger will just be a bonus. It's likely that you will go to your apartment sometime in the afternoon and your predecessor, the teacher that you are replacing, will either leave your apartment the day before that you arrive or even potentially the morning of the day that you arrive. <laughs> the swap is very fast and ideally they should have left your apartment clean and tidy. Your school should also have somebody that comes into the apartment after your predecessor has left to check that everything is working and that everything is tidy for you. But this doesn't always happen. There is a possibility that you could arrive in your town to your new apartment and find it messy. Unfortunately, it has happened to people that I know who have arrived to their apartment and the very first thing that they have to do is clean it. Someone from your school will take you to your apartment after orientation has finished. When you get to your apartment, make sure to ask whoever has brought you there questions about how everything works, appliances and utilities. Make sure you know how to turn on the hot water, the heating, the aircon, the stove, how to change the code on your door padlock. This means you know how everything in your apartment works and at the same time it's an opportunity to check that everything is working properly. And if something isn't working correctly, then your co-teacher or co-worker is right there at the present moment and finds out at the same time as you 
and then can sort that out for you as quickly as possible. You do not pay rent while living there. All you will pay for is your gas, electricity, water and maintenance bills. I know this sounds like me telling you that your apartment is going to be gross and unlivable, but unfortunately I have seen quite a few new teachers arrive with unrealistic expectations that they're going to have some brand new grand apartment just for them and then they are severely disappointed when they find themselves in an apartment that is old and small. Your school have a yearly budget for your apartment and this is used to fix anything that goes wrong and to purchase new furniture. I had my bed replaced in my third year using this budget and I think one year we also had some budget left over so they bought me a blender for my apartment. I did make a separate apartment video while I was living in my one room so if you want to go and see what that looks like with a bit more detail then go and check that out and I will link it down below. Over the past four years I have had five different co-teachers. Korean teachers work on a four-year rotation scheme so every four years they move on to a different school. I don't know the exact details but there's some kind of point system and the more points they collect then the higher position they can go into or the more control they have over where they work. There are some exceptions. One of my co-teachers was there for the four years that I was working at my school and she was a contract teacher like myself so her contract was renewed every year. You may have one co-teacher or you may have multiple co-teachers. In our English office, there were two Korean teachers, one native English teacher, which was me, and one native Chinese teacher. Our office was separate from the rest of the teachers in the school. You may sit in a separate office or you may sit and work in something called the teacher's room. The teacher's room is where the majority of the staff go to work including the vice principal and the principal. If you have your own classroom, you can also go and work in there if you find it quieter. I liked that my office was separate from the teacher's room. I found it quieter. There were less people coming in and out, but I did find it difficult to interact with the other Korean teachers. Working in the teacher's room might be noisier with a lot more people coming in and out. Everybody knows everybody's business, but you will get to build relationships with your coworkers. Your main co-teacher or co-worker will be responsible for sorting you out. They will deal with all of the paperwork that involves you when you arrive. They are likely to come and pick you up or meet you after orientation. And they will also deal with any apartment or school issues you may have. Alongside dealing with you, they also have general school paperwork to do. They will teach classes, so they have to lesson plan. And some of them may also be homeroom teachers. When you arrive, they will help you set up a bank account. They will help you get your alien registration ID card. They will help you into your apartment. And if you're lucky enough, they might be nice enough to help you with a phone contract and show you where local supermarkets are. They will give you advice in school when you need it or when you ask for it, but they are not your babysitter. Don't bombard them with every single issue that you have or expect them to do everything for you. If you are going to teach in Korea, then it is very likely you are an adult and so they are going to treat you like an adult. They are going to presume that you have enough life skills to be able to get through every day without having to have your hand being held. Due to the four year rotation scheme and the fact that every year they could change position even within the school, your co-teacher may not have dealt with a native teacher before. If they have, then they pretty much know what to do, they know how to help you settle in, and they know of the sort of issues that might crop up. If they haven't, then it might be very overwhelming to suddenly be in charge of another person. I don't want to make you paranoid about asking your co-teacher for help, but what I'm saying is they are not there just for you. They are there to teach, and they may be teaching alongside you. They are there to deal with contract issues and apartment issues that you cannot sort out yourself. If you have other problems that might affect work, then sure, talk to them about it. If you have a language or a cultural question, ask them. There will be times where you'll come across something for the first time, such as paying your bills or having a health check done, where you may need to ask, can you tell me the Korean so that I can do this? Can you show me how to do this for the first time so that I can manage this again by myself in the future? Don't expect them to go to the doctors with you when you are sick or drive you home after work on a rainy day. 
because they won't. Unless you have a very, very nice coworker who has a very good relationship with you who will offer to do those things every now and again. Obviously, they are aware that there is going to be a transition period for you where you are adapting to a new place, a new culture, you are going to have to get used to new things and hopefully they will be understanding in that regard. Co-teachers are a case-by-case -case situation. I have not had a single bad co-teacher. All of mine have been very helpful and friendly and have had great English skills. My friend had unhelpful co-teachers in one year, but her friend had a co-teacher that tried to recruit her into a religious cult. So it's a mixture of people and personalities. Teachers don't always get a choice in the position of their school. So your co-teacher may have been placed in a language department, but had zero interest in teaching English. This may then result in a bad co-teacher experience because they are less likely to be helpful. But you may get a co-teacher who wants to be teaching English and might be very enthusiastic and excited about it. I'm mentioning bad co-teachers because it seems to come up a lot when you research about teaching in Korea, but it also will be mentioned often in your orientation. To the point where I've noticed that a lot of new teachers arrive with the impression that they're going to get awful co-teachers. My advice is to go into the job neutral and don't just presume that you're going to get horrible co-teachers. Be polite and friendly, understand your place, and don't give them a reason to think that you are a terrible person. These are people that you're going to be working with daily, so you need to be comfortable with each other. Your co-teacher will also go through the vice principal and principal in regards to issues about you. So your co-teacher's impression of you is going to matter because it can affect how other staff members in the school see you. If you have an issue with a coworker, if they are inappropriate in some way, like recruiting you into a cult, then you can contact your office of education. You will know who to contact as all of that information will be given to you during your orientation. There are different styles of co-teaching. Your co-teacher may join in the class with you and you may teach together. You might split teach and do half of the class each. They may prefer to be stood at the back of the room and just observing you as you teach or they might just leave you to it completely. This is a conversation that you need to have with your co-teacher so that you know what they expect from you and what you expect from them. Who is going to create the lesson plan? How much input do you want them to have in your lesson? Do they want you to teach specific aspects of the English language such as grammar or phonics? Do you want them to translate? In my first year, I split taught with my co-teacher in my second and third year, I was the main teacher, but my co-teacher was always in the room if I needed help with translations as they were elementary students, or if I needed another pair of hands during activities. My fourth year was kind of a mixture of the two. We would discuss our lessons beforehand. So sometimes it would be split teaching. Sometimes I would take the lead and sometimes my co-teacher would take the lead. I enjoyed being the main co-teacher and having complete control over my lesson planning and what activities I did and it also helped me build a very good relationship with my students. During one particular semester, I actually did teach completely alone, which was quite difficult with elementary students who have low English skill, but usually that is not the case for elementary schools anyway. Usually it's middle school and up, where you may be left to it completely. If you're left to it completely, you teach alone, then you're gonna have to adapt and figure out a teaching style where you can manage the classroom, teach effectively, build a good relationship with the students and communicate well. If you don't feel comfortable teaching alone, especially initially as you are a new teacher or don't feel like you have the experience just yet, then tell them that. Regardless of a co-teacher or not, you're going to have to establish some classroom rules. You're also going to have to make sure that your students can understand you when you are giving out instructions, whether it's for homework or in-class activities. If you allow your students to rely on translations from the co-teacher, then they are not going to take you seriously and they're going to switch off when you are speaking English. Your TEFL or whatever qualification that you have and your orientation should cover classroom management and teaching methods. 
There's also a lot of information online and plenty of books that you can look at to get an idea of what to expect and some tips on how to manage particular classroom issues. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure not to miss the next installment of the Ultimate Teaching Guide in Korea. You can find the playlist down below or on my channel. Yeah, I hope to see you in the next video and have a great day.